Good afternoon, everyone. It's Jose Fleming with Preferred Real Estate Brokers, and today I want to talk to you about iBuyers. What do you do about them? How do you work with them? How do you go against them when it comes to a listing? We'll talk about that today. So when a listing agent goes on a listing appointment, they're often confused on what to do as far as should I bring up iBuyers? Maybe an iBuyer has contacted the seller before. And when I talk about iBuyers, I mean like OfferPad or Zillow Offers, you know, one of those that you've heard of before. Now, what I often recommend is when you meet with a seller, the first thing that you should bring up is have you been approached by an iBuyer program? Have they submitted an offer to you? Or have you put your address online to determine if they would offer you a fair price? Now, the reason that I offer this up as information that we talk about to a seller right up front is because I want to get this out of the way. The last thing you want to do is go on a listing appointment, knock it out of the park, do a great job, build a great rapport with the seller, and at the end of the day, you find out you didn't get the listing and you call them back and say, you know, what happened? And then you find out that they actually listed with an iBuyer. And you say to yourself, you know what? I wish I would have done more to inform the sellers or educate them about the iBuyer process so they didn't leave any money on the table. Now on average, when a seller does list with an iBuyer, it's quick, it's easy, it's convenient. You have a guaranteed closing date. Um, you don't have to show the property. Um, it takes all the, all the, the, the hard, Part, the ugly part of listing your home and getting it sold, it takes it out of the equation. Only problem is it costs the seller lots of money. Now on average, if they're leaving ten dollars to $15,000 on the table versus what they could have got if they listed with you and you listed at full fair market value, you have to kind of go over the pros and cons with them. So in some cases, if they did leave $15,000 on the table, how long would that take them to earn? So it's a good question to ask a seller. Seller, how long would it take you to earn $15,000 and bring that in as income to your family? Now, a lot of times they might think about it, well, you know, that's about three months worth of income and it's a big deal. So you have to paint the picture. Now, a lot of times when they receive an offer from an iBuyer program, it seems like they're getting a fair price for their house. And at the end of the day, why wouldn't they? Now, the only problem is they charge a 7% convenience fee. When most listing brokers list a property, they charge anywhere from six to 5% to list the home. Now, the iBuyer will say, well, we charge 7%, just sheer convenience, but we are offering you a fair price. And usually they have the seller sign a contract up front agreeing to the purchase price. The only thing the seller doesn't know is that the iBuyer will come in with a team of experts. They'll comb through the home, they'll do an inspection, and then they'll come back and say, hey, here's an entire punch list of everything that we found in your home that has to be fixed. And pretty much what they wanna do is they wanna fix all these items and turn it over so it's perfect. So when they turn around and flip the property or sell it to somebody else, they can get full market value and get a return on their investment. Remember, iBuyers are in the business to turn a profit. They're not doing anybody any favors. Now, when a typical buyer buys a home, they do an inspection, and based on that inspection report, they'll ask sellers, sellers, will you make the necessary repairs that we're asking for? Now, the seller still has control here to say, listen, I'm not gonna do everything on your punch list because that's a ridiculous request, but I will fix A, B, and C. Are you okay with that? And in most cases, the buyers can negotiate down, and yes, as long as you fix these three items, we'll proceed. Now, the way it works with an iBuyer program is they say, well, sir, according to your contract, you said that any repairs that need to be made, you would go ahead and cooperate with us in getting these repairs done. So a lot of times they'll come in with contractors and inspectors and all these in repairs will total up to be about maybe another eight grand or nine grand. And the seller has to proceed with the purchase because they already signed the initial contract saying they would do the deal. So not only are they paying a 7% convenience fee for getting their home sold without showings, picking their closing dates, et cetera, but on top of that, now they're stuck paying for all these exuberant repairs that were made or found by the iBuyer program. So on top of that, the seller's losing more money and they have no control over the process. It becomes very frustrating. Now, what I recommend that you do is go ahead and if you own a home and you're a realtor, go ahead and submit your address online for an iBuyer offer, see what they offer you and the calculations will be broken down. Now, I recommend that you take that report to any listing presentation that you go on to show them exactly what an iBuyer offer looks like and how their totals measure up to the costs that are associated with selling your home with an actual real estate agent. By showing them the proof and showing them that the convenience isn't always worth 
what they're paying for, they can make an informed decision and at that point they could take that off the table while you're there at the listing appointment. So they never kind of feel like, well, thank you, Jose, you've done a great job explaining to us what it's going to take to sell our home, but we still want to explore our other options. And those other options may be, well, we want to see what we get back from an iBuyer offer. So there you have it. If you go on a listing appointment, just bring it up, just talk to the seller, try to educate them about how the process works and how much they're actually going to have to spend. That way they can make an educated decision on whether they want to take that approach or list with you. Until then guys, I'll see you next time. Take care.